Hello, Rick Off here, and welcome to video number 15 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. I'll be picking right up where I left off in the last video, and uh, I'd just like to point out a um, refresh, quick refresher and state that um, the reasons why this configuration is my preferred choice. First of all, the magnet groups are drawn in by opposite poles attracting. And this uh, allows you a self-starting motor. You see how that's drawn in. That gives it the start. Then the stator arm is swung over, repelling. Then it's drawing in the next group. Swing to repel, draw in, repel, draw in, repel, and so on. And at each entry and exit point, as the wheel turns, you're getting a burst of acceleration. Every one of those points you get acceleration. And this is the beauty of it. Not only that, as I mentioned before, I'm only moving the stator arm half as much as I did in video number 13. Now, what I'm also doing uh, in this setup, I think you remember in, the, uh, in video 13 I had the distance between the stator and the rotor magnets was set at one inch. I've raised the arm a little higher. It's actually at one and three quarters inches now. But I'll think, uh, I think you'll see that uh, this works just fine. And uh, also, uh, by lifting it up that way, there's almost a non-existent resistance to the movement of the stator arm. It moves with uh, great ease. It's almost effortless. Uh, so I'm going to start this off now, and um, as you remember, the, the biggest problem I have with this, uh, doing it this way, is with the timing. There's absolutely no way that I can get the timing perfect. If I did, this would accelerate very quickly, and uh, in no time at all it would be just spinning out of sight. But I, I can't do that. It's, uh, it starts to, to rotate very quickly, and as it does that, well, you look at it when it's rotating quickly, everything becomes a blur. I can't distinguish where the magnet groups start and end. And uh, I also, I'm, I'm sure that I'm not hitting that repel point as I come around. Uh, I'm missing that. And, um, as soon as the wheel starts spinning quickly and things become a blur, I'm just guessing at that point, you see, and um, it's just way too difficult to try and do this manually and visually. But uh, I think I can get it spinning for you and uh, try and maintain it. Uh, Any time that I do head a wrong uh, direction, uh, in other words, if I'm uh, repelling when I shouldn't be, uh, I'll be slowing the wheel down. And, uh, and that's, that's bound to happen. There's just no two ways about it. But let's, uh, let's start this off now with the south of the rotor drawing in the north group. And bring that in just a little bit closer so it has the attraction. Let go. Now you see it's picking up speed and everything's already a blur and I just don't know 
how I'm timing this right now. It's just impossible to time it. Uh, all I can do is try and go for a feel of um, the magnetic interactions and it, it's very difficult to get it right doing that. But I think you'll see that um, very, actually very little movement of the stator arm is needed to maintain rotation. Uh, it's probably only moving about a half an inch right now and still spinning around. You see, I still get the attraction and repulse actions working together. Although they're not at the right points, I'm, I'm quite certain of that. If they were, this would be picking up acceleration and speed uh, with every oscillation of the stator. So it's all just guesswork. Now with a tracking mechanism, the timing is going to be perfect. There's no two ways about that. So with the tracking perfect and the forces of attraction and repulsion working at the correct timing, this is uh, going to be hard to stop. Now what I'll do now is to uh, readjust the stator arm, uh, dropping it back down to the one inch placement uh, where we previously had it, and uh, I'll do the spinning demonstration again at that point. Uh, to do this, I first tighten up the stator arm a little bit, drop the uh, locking arm down, Okay, now it's always best to do this with the uh, with the stator arm swung away from the wheel. You don't you never want to have the stator arm over the wheel when you're uh, going to be letting it down. All right. I remember before that I had seven eighths of an inch measurement here, and so I'm going to duplicate that. Tighten up just one of the thumb screws a little bit. Now I can raise my locking collar up and firm that up. Okay, now the stator arm can't go anywhere and we'll have a one inch separation between the stator and the uh, rotor magnets. Now you can see at this, at this height we have a very strong interaction. You see that? Um, perhaps I could demonstrate exactly how strong that is. Uh, there is a way to do that. Now what I have here in my hand is a digital pull scale. It's actually a scale used for uh, weighing fish and it, it's something that I would use if I were going fishing out in the ocean. Um, it'll, I think it'll weigh up to 50 pounds, but it, it's graduated in pounds and ounces. Okay? So I can get right down to the ounce. And um, I've, I've got a string tied on around a magnet, and uh, the hook of this rig is into the uh, string. So as I, as I begin to pull, we'll see how far up I can go before the uh, wheel does move towards me. It's uh, five ounces. Now I see that I'm almost out of time again, and I don't want to make this spin uh, demonstration brief, so um, I'm going to save it for the next video. And at this time, I'll say goodbye, and thanks for watching my Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator series.